dear friends in Christ. Welcome you all to this Sunday evening worship service. I hope and pray that you are all doing well in good health and strength and the freshness of the Spirit of God. Today is the fifth Sunday after Trinity. I am glad that we are able to meet together in this online worship to glorify our God who is gracious enough to keep us alive and breathe God's own breath. May the Lord bless this worship and it be a blessing to us and our families and our friends. Let us fight on ourselves in the presence of God and begin the worship. Before we begin the worship, may I have the pleasure of introducing today's leader and preacher of this worship service. We are very glad to have Reverend Dr. David Joseph Lodge, an ordained priest from the Church of South India, Kanyakumari Diocese, who has recently joined us in the Department of Christ History of Christianity. We are very glad to inform that he has taken his D.D. studies at Sarampur College, M.T.A. studies at Tamil Nadu Theological Seminary on the right, and a doctorate program in our own Gurukul Kudaran Theological College and Research Institute. We are proud that he is an alumnus, a loving, kind, soft person. And he is going to be a blessing for our community by joining us as one of the professors in our college from this academic year. Reverend Dr. David Joseph's doctoral thesis title is The Ecumenical Vision and Achievements of the NCCI, a Historical Appraisal. Besides this, I am happy to share with you that Dr. David Joseph Raj is married to Dr. G. Jinala, Professor in the NMCC, Marthondam College. She is a professor in the Department of Tamil and uh, these God's children are blessed with uh, two children, Danny Joseph, a boy who is still doing his sixth standard, and Danny Rao Jiyashni doing her fourth standard. We are glad to have our dear brother and servant of God with us this evening to lead us in the worship. Let us be in quietness, feeling the presence of God and prepare ourselves for this worship. Let us worship God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all God's blessing. Let's look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Great and merciful God, your life is the source of all life. Your mercy is our only hope. Your eyes watch over all your creatures. You know the secrets of our hearts. By your life-giving spirit, draw us into your presence, that we may worship in the true life of your spirit, who lives moved by your love, through him who has led us to your heart of love, even Jesus Christ of Lord. Amen. For the glory of God, let's join together and sing the hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Praise Him, Praise Him. Jesus our blessed Redeemer.
holy God, holy and almighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to hear God's most holy word. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace that we may draw near to Him with repentance and faith. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from no one in His holy ways, make your humble confession to the compassionate God that you may be reconciled anew to Him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the confession prayer. O God of compassion, we confess that we have sinned against you and our sisters and brothers. We have not been true followers of your divine in Christ. We have not shared in your liberating work in the world. We have fallen short of your glory. In your great compassion, make us free from our sins and set us free in the joy of the Spirit, that we may serve you with new life. Through Jesus Christ, who gave his life, that we might live in peace with you and with our fellow creatures. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God, all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners. The Savior of the world, the refuse of the repent, forgiveness and strengthens all who truly seek his grace. He accepts you as his sons and daughters and sets you free from the bondage of your past. For Christ died and arose to new life that we might all share his wholeness and abundant life. As God's own people, be merciful in action, kind in heart, humble in mind. Be always ready to forgive as freely as God has forgiven you. And above everything else, be loving and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to the God. Now we shall have the scripture reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6 beginning from verse 1. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God in all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Decide them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorsteps of your house and on your gates. Here is the reading. Praise be to you, O God. The second reading for this evening is taken from the Epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse beginning from 7 to 16. 
the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse from 7. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, When he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean by that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full statue of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Here is the reading. Glory be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like foolish men who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as for having authority and not as their scribes. Praise be to you, Christ. Greetings to you on the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a great privilege to share God's word, the historical Guru Luther Theology College chapter. I would like to thank Jesus Christ, the Almighty God, who leads me and guides me in my theological journeys. I would like to thank our principal, Rev. Dr. John Sandrunan, and our college chaplain, Rev. Dr. Daniel Krubarajanan, the faculty members, students, and their families, non-teaching staffs, and the college learning board. The chosen topic for today's meditation is equipping the people of God to breathe the breath of God. Today, the Church of South India the Church of North India and Mahatma Churches jointly observing the Sunday as Theological Education Sunday. So today, reflection also based on the Theological Education Sunday. Let's look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and loving parent God, as we are going to meditate upon your holy words, speak to us, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. The Old Testament reading, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7 says, Impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, 
and you when you walk along with the road when you lie down and when you get up the churches have to equip the entire people of god for ministry the church is called together to be a distinct community a holy people a sign of sacrament of god's love in the world also the church is called to share in the mission of god we are sent in the power of the spirit to be a testimony to god's grace and to share in the work of god's kingdom the starting point for forming and equipping the people of god in mission and ministry is a renewal of our understanding of disability the last sunday also we reflect disabled a true disabled is someone who follows jesus who is committed to learning and grow in their faith who is prepared for difficulty and sacrifice and who offers their whole life to god in response to god's grace revealed in jesus christ as disabled we are called to live in the rhythm of coming to the lord to be with jesus in the eucharist and being sent out to engage in god's mission the reflection brought out three important major aspects the first one equipping family breathe the breath of god the family is the basic social unit around which everything in society revolves as the family goes so goes society if you destroy the family you will destroy the civilization and equipping christian family to breathe the breath of god is the strength of a society the old testament reading deuteronomy chapter 6 emphasizes many of these same characteristics in his great sermon to the congregation of israel at the end of his life moses declared here o israel the lord is our god the lord is one you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind jesus christ called this great passage the first and great commandment it is command to love the lord god because they love him they will have a lifelong fear all the reverence and obey him deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 speaks of the shema which comes from the hebrew word translated here it is a reminder of the great commandment that is the major confession of faith in judaism the lord is our god the lord is one more literally the hebrew idea is the lord our god the lord one it is the fundamental truth of israel's religion the jewish people believe that the lord yahweh is totally unique one in essence and that he alone is god a kind of theological education it starts from our home we cannot give our children what we do not possess we cannot pass along what we do not know own no one else can do it for us our children's today sunday class programs and public school cannot assume that responsibility it is our responsibility as parents we ought to love the lord with all our heart and to share that love to breathe the breath of god's living word with our children moses admonished the children of israel to become role models of this love in their homes if you love him you will obey him in summary the commandments were to pervade every sphere of the life of human being be spiritually prepared and sensitive to witness to your children share christ with them don't be afraid or ashamed to talk about the spiritual things with them jesus christ was extremely patient with mary and joseph he submitted to him to their authority he lived in harmony with god and his beloved from parents in this covid-19 pandemic situation spend time with our children and teach the god's word so that our children may be equipped in christian way of life 
to be the breath of God's word. The second word, equipping church to breathe the breath of God, based on Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 16. St. Paul says, merely breathing deeply with the description, I urge you to walk in a way that honors Christ. I am begging you to do this. The present way you live have nothing to do with the way you were saved. Verses 4 through 11 says, Present the distribution of gifts of the body. Gifts display diversity within unity. God gives each believer individually with the capacity to serve Him. These gifts help preserve unity in the local church. The grace was given. In the Greek, the word the precedes the word grace. The grace here is unique. It is the grace that enables our gifts to function. Grace is what empowers gifts. The essential idea of grace is to give. God, as the God of grace, is oriented to give, giving to His own. We do nothing to His grace. We cannot, we can only receive it. The purpose of all gifts is to equip the church for ministry, for being the breath of God in ministerial paradigm. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 says like that. Having presented gift categories in verse 11, Paul now gave the purpose behind those leadership gifts. The idea of this verse is that God gave gifted men and women to prepare God's people for building up His body, namely the building up of the corporate body of Jesus Christ. The third one, equipping the people of God for leadership to breathe the breath of God. It's based on Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 29. One of the great responsibilities and privileges of being mature Christian is to develop the people around you to help those that have the potential to become front runners themselves. There is no success without a successor. We read that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not that as the scribes. There was something distinct about the authority of Jesus' teaching. Jesus did not repeat the teaching of others. He spoke from his own authority. The scribes checked with the opinions of previous authorities and never came to final conclusion. Jesus' word was final and finished with authority from the truth. There is a good example of equipping the people of God for leadership training. The great missionaries in our soil, our beloved Stephen Paul and William Cain, were the pioneers of theological education in India. So here I conclude, St. Paul wrote that all scripture is breathed out by God. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. This remarkable praise about the breath of God provides us look into the intimate relationship between God and His Word and me. Let's pray. God of all understanding, who constantly reveal yourself in manifold ways and urge us to equip the people of God to comprehend your precepts, help us to impress the scripture on our children, talk about them when we sit at home, when we walk along the road, when we lie down, when we get up, so that they would bring the word of God and do them and be like the person who built his house upon the rock through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever and me. For receiving the holy word, let's affirm our great faith through Apostle Creed. Let's say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
Great job to the world and the I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Holy Spirit, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the earth. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended to the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us intercede. Dear Lord, we pray for your church in this world, that it may be obedient to your will and strong in your spirit to show your love and glory to our people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for our theological seminaries in India, the teachers and students, especially we pray for our Gurukul Theological College and Research Institute, the principal, teachers, non-teaching staff, students and the alumni. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for all countries that people may live in peace with justice and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and the helpless, the sick, those who are affected in the pandemic situation, the bereaved, and all the victims of grief and persecution that you may rescue them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we remember with gratitude the lives of those who have died in faith and pray that we too may be given strength and courage to follow in your way to the end. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and Eternal, our parent God, we commit our struggles and suffering into your Son's wounded hands, our hopes and aspirations into his praying hands. Our poor, hungry and exploited people into his just and caring hands, our living and departed into his hands, that hold the key to the future, Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. No singing. Let us sing together. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go.
Dear friends, some of our community members have celebrated their birthday last week. And we wish them in the name of our God. And also greet them that their life might be a blessed one for themselves and every other people. On the 8th of July, Kominam Joe Alfred, BD2, and Joseph Elisha Raju, BD3, had celebrated their birthdays. On the 9th of July, Arun Kumar, BD3, and Andrew Christopher, MTH2, had celebrated their birthdays. On the 10th of July, Gurapagari Sabita, BD3, had celebrated her birthday. On the 11th, Rufus S. MTH1 had seen the new year of his life. On the 12th, Deva Malar, BD3, had celebrated her birthday. We wish God's blessings upon these God's children that God will bless them and they will be a blessing to others. We wish you all a very happy birthday. Joy in the Lord. Let's say together the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a pray our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen.